afternoon, everyone. Here's a power board from a Levert servo drive, and it's not powering up when I apply 220 volts AC3 phase to RS and T. None of the LEDs on the front of the drive illuminate. I've got drawings of the power supply section, and I'll put those up at the end of the video. Right here is the switch mode power supply IC. It's a UC3844AN. It drives into this MOSFET here, and the output of the MOSFET switches this switching transformer right here. Let's look and see what kind of diode drops we get on the UC3844. I've got my meter set to diode test mode. Pin 5 here is ground. I'm going to go to pin 1. There's a 0.614 volt diode drop. That looks good. Here's pin 2. It's 0.635. That's good. Here's pin 3. It's 0 0.003. That's, that's a little bit odd right there. Here's pin 4. It's 0.627. That don't look bad. Here's pin 6. This is the output that switches into the gate of that MOSFET. It's 0 0.042. That's not good. That's not good right there. That's, that's shorted the ground. Here's pin 7. That's VN. That's what the voltage coming into that pin. That's what powers up this IC. That doesn't look good either. That's 0.127. And here's pin 8. 0.562. That's, that looks good. That's not bad. Let's look at the MOSFET over here. Pin 1 is the gate. Pin 2 is the drain. I got 2.535. It's not shorted. Here's the source. 2.507. It's not shorted. Let's look at R45. That's the current sense resistor from the source to bus ground. Let's see what it measures like. It should be 0.68 ohms. <laughs> I mean 0.68 ohms. That's 322.4 ohms. That resistor's opened up. So we have shorts on the UC3844. Switch mode power supply I see. The MOSFET is probably damaged because I've got the current sense resistor that's opened up. So we're going to change this IC, this MOSFET, this current sense resistor. And hopefully that'll fix it. What we need to do though, before we change any of this, we need to see if the primary winding of that transformer has opened up. Here's the primary winding of this switching transformer. The drain is connected to one side of the switching transformer and the other side of the switching transformer is connected to the DC bus. There we go. 1.2 ohms. It's not opened up. We're good. We can press on. <laughs> now, if the primary winding had opened up, we'd have to find out if we could get that transformer before we went any farther. After I do the repairs, we'll fire this up and uh, we'll test it. Got to order some parts, though. We'll see you in a few days. I removed the bad parts from that switching power supply circuit. 
I also found a 100 ohm resistor that goes from pin 6, the output pin of the UC3844, to the gate of the switching MOSFET. This is 100 ohms, but it actually reads 19.78 kilo ohms. That resistor is opened up. Now let's check. We'll go to diode test mode from ohms mode. Let's move this out of the way. And we go from pin 5 and ground of the UC3844. Here's pin 1 with my red lead on pin 5. Here's pin 1. That's good. 0.614. Pin 2. 0.647. Volt diode drop. Here's pin 3. Yeah, pin 3 is shorted. There's 0 0.003. Here's pin 4. That looks good. 0.625 volt diode drop. Here's pin 6. That's shorted too. 0 0.042. Here's pin 7. That's shorted. 0.126. Here's pin 8. That looks good. 0.559 volt diode drop. So that's bad. Let's see if we can test the MOSFET. You can turn a MOSFET on with your meter. Put the black lead on the drain, the red lead on the gate, then move your red lead to the source and we've turned it on. 0 0.003. Now leave your red lead on the source and your black lead on the gate. Move the black lead back to the drain and we've turned it off. 0 0.540 volt diode drop. Black lead on the drain. Red lead on the gate. Move the red lead to the source, we've turned it on. Black lead to the gate, leaving the red lead on the source. And we've turned it off. I'm going to replace that MOSFET anyways. Replace these three components and that should fix in that Levert servo drive. And we've got our new parts. I've already installed the 100 ohm resistor that went between pin 6 and the gate of the switching MOSFET from the switch mode power supply IC. Here's our 0.68 ohm resistor. I'm going to put that right there. Here's our switching MOSFET, part number BUZ80A. That goes right here. And here's the UC3844A. That's going to go right here. Put the resistor in first. I can make this fit. I'd have to bend the leads a little bit. Yeah, let's bend the leads a little bit. Come on out. leave these power resistors up in the air a little bit off the board and that way we'll have some better heat dissipation
port installed. These over here, so don't break them with the board. Let's bend the leads on the new MOSFET. A little bit of heat sink grease to the back side of that MOSFET. Just a little bit. This is Tech Spray Transistor Silicon Grease Heat Sink Compound. That's some good stuff right there. Use a lot of that. Install our MOSFET. Before I solder that down, install this plate right here that holds all of the Devices clamp down to the heat sink. bracket installed. Now we can solder the MOSFET to the board. Last part to install. The UC 3844. Vias don't want to take solder. Not very well. Hmm. It's an old board. <laughs> there we go. Now, I've already gone through uh, and tested all the diodes and other resistors in the switch mode power supply. And uh, this 5 volt regulator and plus or minus 15 volt regulator, they're all good. I would like to replace this electrolytic capacitor right here that's in that circuit. I might replace these. Not sure yet. Now somebody's already replaced them at one time. These are not the factory capacitors. But I'd like to change that one right there in particular because it's closest to that. <laughs> that I see. Uh, just because uh, this circuit self-destructed. I mean we had to short it UC3844. The 
current sense resistor was opened up. This 100 ohm resistor between pin 6 of the switch mode power supply I see in the gate of the switching MOSFET opened up. There was a lot, a lot wrong with this circuit. <laughs> Fatally wrong. I'm going to replace that. I partially assembled the Lafert servo drive. I don't want to set it all down in the housing and bolt it down yet because if the switch mode power supply still doesn't work, I'd have to take it all apart again. And that's a that's kind of a a pain because these wires get soldered to the circuit board on the front of the panel. Inside the IGBT is the three phase bridge. So I'm going to apply 220 volts AC three phase to these three wires right here. I've labeled them before I took them out RS and T. These wires right here uh, from the IGBT connect to the servo motor. Here's the motherboard and that covers everything up. <laughs> so I can't get in there and look at anything but I don't want to power this up without the CPU board installed uh, so that the uh, uh, IGBT without the brain might misfire. <laughs> I've got to isolate this power board from the uh, from the housing. I've got these blocks of wood right here and I'm going to lay it down inside there to lift the power board up out of the out of the housing so it's not touching. I can't I can't get this away from the housing because of these wires right here attached to the CPU board. So we've got to put the housing in there also. I'll go sliding off now. I got enough room to set that down in there. I put one back here so that heat sink doesn't touch anything. If you look up underneath and make sure we're not touching any of that housing. I think that covers everything. If I don't yank those wires out, I'm going to take some wire nuts and cover up the motor wires from the IGBT. Okay, we don't short anything out. Pop that IGBT. End up making more work than and we started out with. <laughs> there we go. Now, I've got to move the camera so I can get these wires attached to those wires and to the wall. I put the camera on the other side. Bring the line cord in. Gotta get this positioned. I'm gonna anchor this. Get something to anchor that with. for insulators. I don't want that 220 getting together. That makes some very good sparks. There's one.
two. Here's the last one. phases are insulated. Just plug ourselves into the wall. Now, let's cover this up. So if things go bang, we won't catch no shrapnel. Alright, hold on to your horses. Here we go. Got lights! <laughs> the LEDs lit up on the front. Shoo! Nice. No bang this time. <laughs> oh man. I always get nervous when I first power up something like this after a repair. I've had things come undone many a time. <laughs> I don't win them all. <laughs> That's part of this life. All right, I'll move the camera to the front of the CPU board there, and you can see the LEDs are lit up. There we got our green power LED on, and our EXT dot LED on. Uh, that just means that we ain't got 24 volts applied to the front connectors from an external power supply. I'm going to cycle power. And you can see what it looks like when it powers up. All right, here we go again, applying 223 phase to RS and T. Nice. Nice. We fixed it. <laughs> Good job, folks. Good job. Now we got to get it all back in the box and uh, in its housing. Today's Saturday. I think I'll save that for Sunday. Let's go celebrate. <laughs> All right, tomorrow we'll put it all back together and we'll run a servo motor on it. We'll see you in the morning. Good morning, everyone. Here we are, it's Sunday. Let's power this up one more time before we put it together. Good, good. All right, I'm going to power it down and let those bus capacitors discharge. We don't want to be handling that drive with those capacitors charged up. That'll light you up. <laughs> okay, we're unplugged from the wall. We'll give those capacitors about five or ten minutes to discharge. We'll come back in a little bit. Let's check see if those bus capacitors are discharged. All right, 298 millivolts. That's good. Set this over here. Now we're disconnected from the wall. We can undo our line voltage connections. Get that out of the way here.
for the fun part. <laughs> oh. It's the only problem with these drives is that we've got 400 million acres surrounding this circuit board and they have to shove it all into a little box. <laughs> the box is smaller than the board. <laughs> okay. Let's try. Get this in here. forward. Okay, what's our hold up? There we go. Okay. Hey, you know, here we are at the house. Now we're going to look at the, the FERT switch mode power supply circuit that we just got done repairing. Now there's a couple of ways to power up the UC3844. We can power it up with applying 220 volts AC3 phase to R, S, and T terminals and the bus capacitors will go to about 300, 310 volts DC and that is applied through this forward bias diode the 10 ohm resistor here this 100k ohm resistor here to pin 7 of the UC3844 and when the under voltage lockout is above that rating of that pin 7, the UC3844 starts to switch on its output. The second way to power this up is you don't have to apply a voltage to that IGBT, the three-phase bridge inside that IGBT. So if you wanted to power up this drive without powering up the motor section of the drive, you could apply 220 volts single-phase to the F and N inputs to this bridge rectifier. This is a green connector on the front of the drive. And only the control voltage will be powered up. The motor power section and bus capacitors will not be powered up. Now when things are running normally, 
Vn plus Vn here reference to bus ground is about 16.88 volts DC thereabouts. Let's look at the next page. Oh! <laughs> you remember the video we did with the over under voltage alarm? Here is three of the six resistors that we replaced each being a hundred kilo ohms and this point right here we're looking at the DC bus this point right here goes to a voltage comparator and if there's no voltage or under voltage here the voltage comparator tells the CPU board that hey we don't have no bus voltage or the bus voltage is too low and the CPU board deactivates the outputs it won't run unless this voltage right here is high enough and it turns on that over under voltage alarm LED <laughs> okay I got sidetracked there let's look at the next drawing I've got here all these drawings are done by hand I don't ever get schematics in the shop and you all probably don't either <laughs> I ain't seen the schematic since Dad pulled the back off a of Zenith TV set back in, what, 1969 or 70 or something like that? <laughs> so, here is the uh, primary winding of that switching transformer. Here's the 310 volts DC up here. Here's our switching MOSFET. Here's our UC3844. Down here is plus VN that we just analyzed. And there's ground, pins 7 and 5. When this starts switching, we no longer, although it's still there, we no longer need the voltage from the bus or that bridge rectifier to come in here on the VN pin. It is derived from a secondary winding that's rectified and filtered right here. This also runs out to another rectifying diode filter cap to power up the comparator ICs, the LM339. So what did we see bad? Well, we saw that pin 3 was shorted, that's our current sense input of the UC3844. We saw that the switching output, V out on pin 6, was shorted. We saw V in on pin 7, the voltage input to power up that IC was shorted. Here we had a 100 ohm resistor between pin 6 and the gate of the switching MOSFET was open the current sense resistor the 0.68 ohm current sense resistor was open <laughs> but believe it or not and, and this just amazes me how this works the switching MOSFET was okay we turned it on and off with our meter and the primary winding of the switching transformer did not open up how in the world we had all of this catastrophe right here but the the two power devices that should have went up survived <laughs> that's electronics for you that's electronic troubleshooting for you you see the oddest things well there you go folks <laughs> amazing <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that thank you for helping me troubleshoot and repair that Lafert servo drive. Good night, folks.